guys so welcome back to let's reads welcome back to vlogmas so in today's video i wanted to do a video dedicated to uh book um adaptations so books turn into movies you, as you guys know i'm a huge fan of movies always in my monthly wrap-ups i you know will tell you guys movies that i watch in the month because every month i usually watch I'm watching a movie or two or three and I was like you know what let me show you guys some books that I like that are films now I have some that are like well known and some that are like really not I'm probably gonna have to do a part two and then also you guys know I'm everything you know black 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 so I do have some movies that I want to share with you guys that are not by you know like black authors or by black directors that I want to share but in this video we're just gonna talk about uh black books turned into movies so let's start with the ones that are kind of, that are well known get those out of the way so first of course color purple i mean we all know that come on now we all know color purple we all love color purple i i love both the book and the movie if i'm being honest the book has more obviously more insight i would say especially when it comes to suge and Celie's relationship um, and then there were some things that I did not know about Suge and missed this relationship. And if you read it, the book, you know what I'm talking about, uh, that they didn't explore in the movie. But I mean, that movie is fantastic. One of my favorites. That's a movie that although the subject matter is sad, I still can watch it over and over again. Next is How So I Got a Groove Back by Terry McMillan. I love this one too. I remember when that actually came out. Uh, I love her best friend in this uh, book. I know in the movie, Whoopi Goldberg uh, played it and she played it fabulous. I can't remember her best friend's name. What was her best friend's name? Oh Lord. Um, but yeah, her. Um, I loved her best friend. I also loved um, both of her sisters. Regina King played one of her sisters and is it Suzette Douglas? Uh, Suzette Douglas also played one of her sisters. It was perfect. Their chemistry, you would like, you literally thought they were real sisters. It was so good. I mean, that casting is fantastic. And you got Angela Bassett. I mean, come on now. Of course, Waiting to Excel. Yes, one of my favorites. That cast, perfect. From the main characters to the supporting characters. Oh my goodness, like, and also you have Forrest Whitaker directing the movie. This was just beyond amazing. This will forever be one of my favorite movies. I mean, yeah. Next is For Color Girls Who've Committed Suicide When the Rainbow is Enough. I really like this movie. I remember when it came out, I was like a freshman in uh, college. And girl, that cast, that cast, heavy hitters. Felicia Rashad, Kimberly Elise. Anika Noni Rose, Carrie Washington, Loretta Devine, Janet Jackson. Who else am I missing? Who am I missing? Uh, Tessa Thompson. Oh, I know it's somebody else that I am missing. Uh, oh, girl. Just fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. And the crazy thing is, in Shaki Shange, she actually did not like the adaptation. Oh, Whoopi Goldberg. She was in there too girl um but when i learned she didn't like it i'm like ooh. but you know how authors are about their works and their babies or whatever um but she she didn't like it but when i tell you i, I enjoyed this tyler perry did a fantastic job um yeah next is passing by nella larson now of course I mean, Harlem Renaissance, y'all know that is my stuff, okay? Live for Harlem Renaissance. I was so glad that they did adapt this as a film. And I'm so glad now that Nella Larson is getting her just due. People are knowing her. And the good thing is, after the movie came out, of course, people want to read the book. So that's a win-win right there. Only hiccup I had about the movie. One thing is those... The two, the people that they cast as the main characters, they don't look like they can pass. They don't look like white women, okay? And it's like, if you know the history of passing, there's no way they would have been able to pass, okay? Even if they made it, you know, the picture black and white, uh-uh, you can still tell those were women of color. But that was the only hiccup, which I understand why they did that like that, um, but... Mm, 
girl but overall fantastic movie i like that they didn't take anything um out or add anything that was unnecessary it was perfect perfect next is fences august wilson i could have killed troy of how he did his wife and his son lord and of course the movie was fantastic i mean denzel washington he embodied troy okay and Viola davis it's Viola Davis. This was fantastic, fantastic. Another play by August Wilson is The Piano Lesson. This was, I believe, a TV movie, and it had Alfred uh, Witter in it, and she, I mean, it's Alfred Witter. Like, girl, I am a huge fan of Alfred Witter. I've been watching her since I was a little girl, and I just love this story. Boy, Willie, he just gets me, okay? I just, oh, I love him. Um, So, yeah. Now, the next two I want to mention is by Alex Haley. So, of course, Roots, the miniseries, we all know. Fantastic. Uh, I always have a hard time uh, watching the beginning with, like, the middle passage. It just, Lord, it gets me, you know. Oh, oh. But it's like after Kizzy is born, then I love it. I watch it in bits and pieces, girl. It's like, that's literally how I watch it. So, basically, after Kizzy die, I'm done watching it. Oh, Roots, fantastic, fantastic. But my favorite from Alex Haley is Queen. Now, this you actually can watch in a day. Roots, you can't watch that in a day. I have, girl, I grew up watching this. And this book, um, I'm going to be honest, the book in the beginning, really, 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 really boring. It's like, oh, Lord, because he's setting up everything. He's setting up the family tree and things like that. Because this is about his grandmother. Queen was his grandmother on his dad's side. Yeah, his well, his great-grandmother um, on his father's side. And you see, Lord, so Queen is not a typical slave. Um, she is educated. She don't get beat. She don't really work in the fields. Um, but y'all, heavy hitters in this movie. First of all, you have, have Holly Berry playing Queen. Everybody know Holly Berry can act. You have um, Jasmine Guy playing her mother. Paul Whitfield uh, playing Queen's granddad. Girl, I mean, heavy, 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 heavy uh, hitters. This was so good. I like the book and I like the movie. I'm going to be honest, I think I like the movie better. Uh, because like I did state, the beginning of the book is a bore. Okay, so let's get to some that are not really just like well, well, well known. So next is Half of the Yellow Sun by Chimamazi Ngozi Adichie. Love this movie. Um, this is about the Biafra War um, in the, what, the 1960s. This movie, so good. Um, you have Anikinoni Rose and uh, Tandy Newton. They are playing sisters. Uh, I think, are they twins? Are they twins? Yeah, they're twin sisters. Uh, you know, obviously it's a Nigerian family set in Nigeria and in the background is the Biafra War. And although like, you know, the background is about war, but you still have a love story. You have betrayal. Um, just everything that I love. Y'all know I love drama and tea and this book has some drama and tea. I don't know if I was uh, kind in it. I don't know if I would um, forgive Elena. Okay, because girl... Um, and then, girl, the ending, I understand it, but what happened to Kainene? What, what happened? I have my theories, but, oh, the way it ended was like, oh my goodness, from the book and the movie, but still fantastic. Chimamanda knows how to write. Brilliant. Next is Beloved by Toni Morrison. Um, I personally, this is not my favorite Toni Morrison book. It's still, I mean, it's Toni Morrison. Toni Morrison girl can write what? Batman, okay? This movie, good. Again, heavy hitters. Kimberly Elise, you have Oprah Winfrey, Tandy Newton. That's all you got to say. They embodied these characters, okay? Um, and yeah, but I know this, the movie, it, didn't do too well in theater. Oprah thought it was going to be real, real big because the book was so big. Uh, but overall, still a good movie, still a good book. Next is I Know Where the Cage Bird Sings by Aunt Maya Angelou. Now, this was a TV movie and it was so good. 
um, who plays her mother, uh, Vivian Baxter, is Diane Carroll. And it's Diane Carroll, okay? I'm a huge fan of Diane Carroll. But I didn't know it was a TV movie. And I just, I think I was looking up something and I saw it. I'm like, oh, I'm watching this because this book is one of my favorite books of all time. This is the first book I picked up on my own when I was 14 years old and never looked back. So always will have a special place in my heart. But you guys, please check out the um, TV movie for this. Fantastic. Another TV movie is The Wedding by Dorothy West. Now, I have not read this book and I need to read it. I'm thinking I'm going to do a reading blog. If you guys want me to do a reading blog, please let me know uh, because I already know what I'm going to do. I'm going to read it and then watch the movie. Now, I have seen the movie. Love it. You have Lynn Whitfield, who else? And Holly Berry playing the two main, main characters. And I believe that Oprah Winfrey directed it. Um, Dorothy West was an author of the Harlem Renaissance, but her book didn't come out until like, she only had two books. They didn't come out when the first book didn't come out until like the 1940s. And then this book didn't come out until like 1998, I believe. No, this book didn't come out until 1995. And you know what? This is a first, I just realized this is a first edition. Oh, girl, I got a first edition, Dorothy West. Oh, you can't tell me nothing. It says first edition. Huh. Okay. Well, didn't know that. Uh, but yeah, this talks about black elite, uh, black middle class. You have doctors, you have, um, you know, just a black experience looked at differently. It's no struggling, you know? Uh, so that was one reason why I loved it. I haven't seen it in a long time. Um, but anything that Lynn Whitfield's in, I normally like it because she just is a fantastic actress. I mean, it's Lynn Whitfield. Come on now. Okay, next is Miss Jane Pittman, the autobiography of Miss Jane Pittman by Ernest J. Gaines. Love this. You have the brilliant, talented Cicely Tyson. So sad when she had passed. Love Cicely Tyson. Um, I mean, what can you say about this? It's just brilliant. The way that Ernest J. Gaines, he just knows how to craft those sentences. And I always like his books because it's set in Louisiana. And I always say over and over again, both sides of my family is from Louisiana. And I just love those stories. Um, and I last year, he was a part of my three author project. And I read all of his fictional catalog. Fantastic. Fantastic. His works are hard because they deal with injustice of black men um, and women, mainly injustice of black men. Um, but he just still knows how to tell a story. And I was just flabbergasted when I watched this movie actually as a child and loved it. So yeah, guys. Next is uh, J. California Cooper. Now, this is a collection of short stories. It's called Homemade Love. But um, the short story of Funny Valentine actually was turned into a TV movie. It used to always come on uh, BET. And I remember my sister and I loved it, okay? Um, it starts Loretta Devine and Alfred Witter. Uh, they are cousins. And you have Deary B and Joyce May. Deary, Deary B is a, a little slow, um, but has a heart of gold. She just is so sweet. And you have Joyce May. They have been, they're more like sisters, okay? And it's, you know, set in the South. And in the movie, something horrible happens. You know, it recounts back to what happened and things like that. Um, in the book, it doesn't, in the short story, the short story is a little bit different than um, the movie. Both are great, like fantastic. Um, but I have always loved this movie. I think it's on YouTube. I will link it down below. They, at one point, they had the whole movie. Um, so if it do, so if they do, I will link it down below. Please watch it, you guys. And if you guys have watched it, tell me if you like the movie because I personally loved it. I mean, you have Alfred Witter and Loretta Devine. Next is Native Son by Richard Wright. Now, there's two adaptations that I've seen. I know one was in the 80s and it had Oprah Winfrey playing her, Oprah Winfrey playing Bigger Thomas' mother. And then there was a recent one that came out about two or three years ago that was premiered on HBO. That one, the ending, it was a little different than the book because this right here, you got to get your mind right, okay? Because the stuff that happens in this and Bigger Thomas, Lord Jesus. Um, but 
I actually did like the newer version of uh, Native Son. And then I know it's another one that actually Richard Wright is playing, I believe, Bigger Thomas. I've seen half of that one. Um, but this book is hard and the movie is hard because the subject matter is, it's a lot. But still, overall, it was really good. Like I said, the newest one, that probably was my favorite. And then lastly, I have The Women of Brewster's Place by Gloria Naylor. Love it. You have Oprah Winfrey uh, playing the uh, one of the main characters, uh, Maddie Michaels. And she also, I think, executive produced it. Um, I mean, Oprah Winfrey, she just, she put these black books out there. She honestly does. Love it. But this girl, 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 this mini series, fantastic. The story is fantastic, first of all. You have, The Bruce's Place is a housing project. Each character tells a story of how they uh, got to Brewster's Place and living in this project. You have, who is in this? Lynn Whitfield, a goat. Oprah Winfrey, a goat. Jack A, a goat. Cicely Tyson, a goat. Robin Givens, a goat. Leon, a goat. Shall I go on? You have everybody up in here. This is so good. Girl, me and my sister always quote this movie <laughs> all the time. Lynette McKee. Oh my God. Paula Kelly. Girl, 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 girl. Y'all, if you haven't seen this, please watch it. Get it. Watch it right now. This is so, so, so good. And the book is so good. Gloria Naylor was a fantastic author. And you see I'm gushing over this this would just be beyond amazing so yeah guys <laughs> oh, that's all I have when it comes to some of my favorite books turned into movies I, I probably will do a part two um also too I want to do a video of just some like black movies that are not really well known they're not necessarily books turned into movies but uh, I do want to dedicate a video with just like black uh movies please let me know if you guys want me to do that because y'all know I live for them. And I love the little low budget films. Girl, the hood films, all of it. I have so many that I can put y'all on. Let me know if you guys want me to do that. Okay, so it's still vlogless. Let me uh, pick up my three songs that I'm going to listen to today. Okay, the first uh, Christmas song that I'm going to be listening to today is C.C. Winans. Uh, Let's Celebrate Christmas. Celebrate Christmas. Be a good chance. I told y'all C.C. Winans is going to be on rotation love that christmas album is from the gift next song i'm going to be listening to is james brown santa claus go straight to the ghetto go straight to the ghetto hit up your reindeer i mean come on now I, I have to listen to this okay that's like the epitome of a black christmas song okay and the last song i'm going to be listening to is destiny's child little told y'all Destiny's Child Eight Days of Christmas that is my favorite Christmas album of all time so that is also on rotation okay so yeah guys that's all I have for you I'll be back with more black books bye